What's up troops, it's me, a Tactical Brit, and today I'm here with another squad guide. Now in the previous guides, we've looked at the spawn screen, the map, and movement. And today, we're going to be looking at guns and equipment, and I'm going to run you through the basics of engaging enemies uh, at all kinds of distances, and how you can best effectively engage an enemy. So, first things first, aiming down sights. Right click into your mouse, shooting, left click in your mouse. And uh, there's quite a cool thing that you can do here. And that's called switching fire modes. In the bottom right corner, there's an indicator that says S. If I click into my scroll wheel, that's now A. Automatic. So, very simplistic buttons. And the final button, of course, is reload. Now, one thing I want to mention to you guys about reloading in squad is the indicator towards the bottom right. As you can see, there are currently four white bars and one greenish kind of yellow bar. Now, I'm going to deplete one of these bars by shooting and watch how the color changes. Magazine's empty, right? Now, in squad, you don't get a bullet count. You only get a magazine count, and this is really important. Now, if you throw out a magazine, you are going to lose ammo. It's important that you deplete your entire magazine before you throw away an, uh, an entire mag. There'll be some times where you're running around for a good half an hour, and your magazines are going to need to stretch far if you're engaging a lot of enemies. If you're laying down suppressive fire a lot, if you're taking on a lot of enemies, you need to keep a good eye on your mag count and make sure you're not throwing away ammo unnecessarily. Sometimes if your magazine hasn't been entirely depleted, your soldier will put things back away and uh, some of your magazines and ammunition still there because I reloaded too quickly. A lot of you guys will be used to some games where hitting reload on every time you fire is quite the standard. This is not the case in squad. Make sure you have efficient magazine count when using. So, something I mentioned in the movement video before, and if you haven't watched that, it's available in the description below as part of my guide series, is engaging enemies in terms of stances. So, as we know, there are three stances in squad. You've got standing, crouch, and prone. I just went through the floor there, hey-ho. Uh, by the way, quick mention, this is Jensen's Range, which is a single-player map that you can use uh, to try out everything before you jump into multiplayer, and you can do that on the main menu. But let's get back to standing, crouch, and prone. So, standing crouch and prone is going to offer three things for you. The first one is standing has scope sway, and quite a decent amount of scope sway. Now, maybe if those guys are 25 meters away, it's not too bad. So, the scope sway is enough to maybe hit them quite effectively if I'm using a semi automatic fire. Pretty easy to take out, relatively accurate. However, when the scope sway is that bad, when they're 100 meters away, let's see if I can hit this guy in the doorway standing with scope sway. It took a lot longer, didn't it? It's 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 just a kind of an issue with standing. So if you're going to engage an enemy at close range, you can perhaps get away with standing. But if you're going to engage an enemy who's 100 meters away, your best option is to go crouching or even prone. As you can see, if I go crouching here, scope's way is significantly reduced. It's a lot easier to hit that target a bit more effectively. And if I go prone, hell, it's even easier. Now... Alongside that, we have the option to breathe in and out. Now, although the sort of scope sway can be pretty decent at crouching, it's still not entirely accurate. Now, if you press the sprint key, uh, which is shift, you also get to focus. You can only do this, though, if you have a certain amount of stamina. This is really important for people who are using sniper rifles and things like that, uh, and even semi automatic fire as well. Now, without focusing, things can be okay to hit, but also somewhat challenging. Whereas if I focus... I can let go of an entire magazine quite quickly at semi-automatic fire uh, with relatively no issues in terms of accuracy. So if I lay down here, uh, I'm going to focus. When you focus when you're laying down, you effectively have 100% accuracy almost when using semi-auto. That was incredibly easy to take out that target. So make sure you're looking at your stances when you're engaging an enemy and keeping an eye on your stamina. As I mentioned in the movement video previously, your general starting position when engaging and your overall stamina is going to determine the outcome of your shots. If you're going up against an enemy who has a full amount of stamina, is crouching or prone on a building, they have a full advantage over somebody who is sort of just sort of half-assing attempted 
uh, attacking them, especially if they're just using, like, absolutely no stamina, standing upright, and they're missing bullets left, right, and center. And another thing as well about your sort of general movement and considering what you're doing when you're shooting is more down to what I like to call the selective engagement. Now, let's say, for example, I'm using semi-automatic fire at range. Yeah, that's fine. It makes sense. I'm crouched. I can do a lot of damage from there. But at the same token, I don't want to be using a semi-automatic fire at close range. That's where automatic fire is preferable. Automatic fire will allow me to take out enemies in close quarters, even if I do miss a shot or two. I will not get penalized excessively for missing a shot on automatic fire. I can take out lots of targets quite quickly within sort of 5 to 10 meters with no problems whatsoever. However, it will diminish my magazine count quite successfully. Now, the only thing I will say is that semi-automatic fire in close quarters can be quite beneficial if you've got a good trigger finger and good accuracy, but if you don't trust yourself on that, you're going to want to be spraying and praying to your heart's content and keeping a good eye out for your magazine capacity to make sure you don't run out or burn out just genuinely too quickly, which is something I occasionally do. And next, we're going to look at gun emplacements. So you guys have probably been looking at these in the videos with wide open eyes and as to how to use them. Um, so you press F to equip any one of these uh, emplacements. Emplacements are only available around um, a deployment point or a forward operating base provided they have been built by a squad leader. Uh, sometimes they're even on the back of vehicles such as uh, uh, certain technical trucks. But this is how it works, same system, aim down sight. Now, these magazines do, of course, need reloading um, eventually. It's it's something, these things will not have unlimited ammo. It's not that simple. Um, and they do get restocked when they're in uh, sort of range of the forward operating base. They take a little while, but eventually they do get restocked with some ammunition. They're very accurate, and they do have a degree of penetration. Uh, penetration is something that's being progressively added to squad, and certain caliber weapons can go through certain walls and stuff relatively easy, and we've got a browning here. Also, the shift key does still work. So, these emplacements are fundamentally for uh, using suppressive fire or taking out a large amount of enemies or perhaps just getting in that covering fire that you guys need. Um, they are pretty heavy hitting, uh, but it's very important to use them effectively, to not waste the ammunition on them, and to be as efficient as possible as a shooter as you can be. So, to quickly recap, stances are going to affect how you shoot people. Crouching and prone is strongly recommended for long distance, as is semi-automatic fire. Automatic fire is recommended for close range engagements, and semi-automatic fire is assisted when you use the shift key to focus and uh, get a bit more accuracy on your targets. So, that's about it for the shooting video today, guys. Um, we're also going to have some look now at equipment. That was absolutely nowhere near English, now that I think about it. But we're going to look at equipment and how that works in Squad 2. So, uh, you may have wondered, hey Lachlan, you know, you've just been using an assault rifle. Well, I do have a sidearm, I do have some grenades, I do have some smoke grenades, and this all varies dependent on the class that you are. Certain classes are going to have different weapons, different equipment. Some of them have rocket launchers, some of them have grenade launchers, some of them have smokes, grenades, bandages, everything. The squad leader class I'm currently using uh, has the ability to use binoculars, which is pretty cool, on the 6 key, and it lets me zoom into the distance of things that perhaps aren't as easy to see uh, from up close. Now... Switching between these is quite simple. You use the number keys from 1 to 6. Sometimes they might even be a little bit longer. Uh, here I've got my sidearm. And the sidearm tends to be for a uh, very limited amount of classes, normally the sniper class and the squad leader class. Next, I've got my grenade. Now, there's two ways to throw a grenade. The left key and the right key. The left key is overarm, and overarm is for as much distance as you can physically get on the thing. Still has a pretty good blast radius, though. And then we have the right key, which is underarm. And I'm going to use a smoke grenade for this. And that's a really low lob. So say, for example, if um, I'm outside this wall, right? I see some enemies. Uh, you know, they're, in, they're inside uh, this little compound here. Um, and I've got a frag grenade. Let's say this smoke grenade here is a frag grenade. I can use my right key and quickly lob this over the wall, take all of those guys out 
relatively effectively. Uh, some of you guys might even have coloured grenades. This is uh, applies to the Grenadier. Um, they have uh, coloured grenade launcher shells, but some of you may have coloured smoke as well. The squad leader most certainly does. And coloured smoke is fantastically useful at pinning targets out for your teammates to use. So if I say, hey guys, you know, um, I get on my comms, which again is a guide available in the video, but I press the B key, I say, uh, squad, uh, I've laid down some blue smoke, there's some enemies in that close vicinity, within 5 meters, 10 meters. red smoke, white smoke, and blue smoke to distract the enemy whilst they're reviving a teammate using the medic class. So smoke is your best friend in some situations. It can pinpoint enemies, and it can be quite useful in all manners of ways. Now, one thing I want to show you as well is the bandage system. Now, at the moment, I don't really have a way of damaging myself. I'm not entirely sure. I might I might try to jump off a wall or something. But effectively, if I damage myself because uh, I have fallen too far or something, um, and you know, I, maybe I've hurt my leg or something, or I've been shot at and I'm bleeding out, the bandage system is useful. So right-clicking the bandage will heal yourself. If you're bleeding out, you'll know it. You'll get shot by something, or you'll take some falling damage, and your screen will be pulsing, your guy will be breathing heavily, and color will steadily be dry draining away from your screen. Now, pressing the right key is going to bandage yourself, and pressing the left key will bandage someone else. Bandaging someone else is quite important, uh, especially if they're bleeding out and there's no medics nearby and they need some time to live. Um, the bandage also applies to people who have died. You need to bandage somebody who's injured or on the floor before you, a medic can revive them. Again, that'll be explained in my medic guide video, which you can check out in the description below. And the final one, which uh, actually replaces the binoculars, is normally... Uh, let me see if I can get an ammunition crate here and quickly switch class to show you guys what this is about quickly. Um, the final one, if I go for a normal rifleman, just quickly here, is uh, we've got our shovel. And left-clicking the shovel is going to dig things uh, for uh, away for enemies, and right-clicking the shovel is going to dig them in. So say, for example, um, if I find um, this little ammunition crate here, and I right-click on it, give it a little while, There you go, the ammo crate has disappeared, but then if I left click on it, it comes back. So right clicking things is going to allow you to dismantle things, and left clicking things is going to allow you to build things. So if somebody places some sticks in the ground, you'll notice that there'll be like four metal things in the ground, and you just or a crate box or something like that, like a little, uh, a little shipping platelet like that. You dig on it, and then you'll be able to build things, and if you dig on the right click of it, you'll be able to get rid of it, and it's quite simple. And I've actually just switched to a Rifleman, which has an ACOG sight. Um, the Rifleman is one of the generic sights um, that is available, obviously. It's not a sniper rifle, but it's a slightly more medium range assault riflist. Uh, as you can see, much better combat effectiveness at range. Um, I think there are only two of these positions available per squad, so you're going to want to get them quick. The ACOG sight is quite useful. Um, like I say, it's one of those things you want to lay down or crouch for. But, in conclusion, that's about it for our shooting and equipment. Uh, if you need any questions, leave them down in the section below. If you want to learn how to use individual roles, check out the description below. There is guides on absolutely everything down there. It's been me, the Tactical Brick, guys, and I'll see you again soon in another video.